from the Honorable Minister Sri Bhugana Rajendra Nath, the Finance Minister of Andhra Pradesh. Thank you so much, sir, for making time out of your demanding schedule and sparing time for us. I request you to please be here and share a few words with us. Ms. Praveen Mahajan, former chairman, chairperson of uh, CBEC. Mr. M.C. Joshi, former chairperson of CBDT who had to leave just now on uh, some emergency. And uh, Mr. Kapoor of the PwC and uh, dignitaries on the stage. The state of Rajasthan for partnering with TIOL in this event. Sri Shailendra Kumar, Chairman of the TIOL Awards and uh, distinguished delegates, guests and very importantly the winners of the TIOL Awards 2023. Wish you all a good afternoon. Namaskar. Taxes generally or what we pay for a civilized society. But how we tax and spend determines the extent to which our society is good or evil. Very difficult part of both governance and administration is the taxation. Because here you have the taxpayer who generally wouldn't want to pay and the tax man for whom his normal work also is generally not appreciated or liked by the taxpayer. I remember when I was young, I used to read this Reader's Digest. These days I don't see youngsters reading Reader's Digest much. So we used to have this humor in uniform and then uh, various other parts of the book where we not only develop our vocabulary, but also read some short stories. So with this particular small story, which somehow registered in my mind, this was when I was very young. So it says, a taxpayer gets a notice to pay tax. So then it's inevitable for him to pay tax. So those were the days when there was no electronic transfer of money. So then, very grudgingly, he writes a check and then on top of the envelope, he writes, now let us say there is an address for the tax department. In India, it's Aikar Bhavan. In the West, some other address. So he writes on top to the bloodsuckers, etc., etc., etc. And then he writes the address and then sends it across. So the person who receives this has to acknowledge, right? So then the acknowledgement comes back after a time. It says, address to the taxpayer, but it says, those who are cursed the most are blessed the most, Psalm so and so, Proverbs so and so. So this somehow registered. And then after I finished my education, I started uh, involving myself in the family business, a very small business. And then uh, generally, with all due respects to the tax consultants, we had our tax consultant in our small town. So he said, sir, your father normally likes to pay taxes to whatever extent uh, is taxable. But unfortunately, you pay taxes and then you fall in the top bracket. So because of falling in the top bracket, there's regular scrutiny. So whenever there's regular scrutiny, always you come to the scrutiny bracket. So then I said, I asked, what is the solution? So he said, better to somehow lessen the tax payment. So me being young, I thought, what a beautiful suggestion this tax consultant has given me. So how come nobody told me such good ideas? So I went back home and then in the village, I told my dad that this is what the consultant says. Then he told me, look, listen, there is a government. There is a police, there is the administration, there is the army. There is a whole big structure in the government. Whom does it actually take care of the most? Who is benefited the most? 
is it the rich or the poor what difference it is going to make of good or bad governance to the poor the more the difference it is going to make to the rich so if you don't pay taxes for your safety you expect the poor man to come and pay taxes for your safety that's when it registered to me what is it was very right and then however in our country most of the tax either the rates of tax or uh, the the way tax is collected in spite of the principles of the lafacker we have certain ways of collection of taxes but then the premise generally here is mostly on evasion and enforcement whereas naturally in a good society it ought to be more on procedural compliance and service delivery taxpayers normally what they pay is of utmost importance to any government for the reason that the government runs only on the taxes that is collected i took over the portfolio of state taxes an year and a half ago the first two and a half years of our government i was minister for finance and planning and legislative affairs i was given additional charge of state taxes what we call commercial taxes in andhra pradesh as well as skill development and training so soon after i took over this portfolio i would like to mention to you since there are a lot of taxmen here from different states as well as taxpayers certain reforms that we were able to do which might come of some use to various uh, taxmen here from different states so as soon as i took over i held the first meeting then i called uh, the important uh, the commissioner chief commissioner commissioner joint commissioner to the level of joint commissioner and said so how are we placed so spontaneously especially at the level of uh, the joint commissioners additional commissioners and commissioner not the chief commissioner spontaneously they said sir very good so i said very good and by what do you mean by very good how do we place ourselves in this country they said sir we are the best i said good very nice to hear that positive nature in you but then who has certified us has somebody certified us or is it just the confidence no sir we have started these reforms long long ago we are amongst the best i said fine i appreciate your confidence but at the same time i would like you to form teams and then go around the country go check out what's happening in the other states so a lot of states were very kind enough to cooperate with us and provide us with uh, our uh, uh, officers with insights into how the functioning of their uh, tax departments so i had a very good secretary as well as chief commissioner of commercial taxes then between us we designed uh, the department to be divided into various groups so various groups we sent we visited the state of kerala the state of karnataka the state of tamil nadu the state of maharashtra the state of rajasthan the state of uttar pradesh and if i recollect may i either the state of west bengal or himachal one of the two so i wanted a spread of different states to, to understand how the tax collect lot of insights we got and then after getting the insights we tried to design a tax structure which i think our state taxes were probably the structure was designed about four or five decades ago after four or five decades with of course good cooperation and also guidance and uh, support from our uh, chief minister uh, shri jagan mohan reddy who is also very young and dynamic and understands uh, the requirement for reform so then we actually restructured our department and in the process of restructuring we brought about various uh, reforms which basically again address the way of tax collection of moving towards procedural compliance and service delivery more so that the not only the tax collection the tax basically is supportive to business so some of the measures that we took was one we introduced the trade advisory councils so this 16 divisions we have all the 16 divisions we introduced the trade advisory committees councils where an institutional platform is provided so the good tax payers and then the uh, um, the uh, uh, industrial and commerce uh, the associations that we have they along with the jurisdictional officers every quarter they have to 
have a meeting and then the minutes of the meeting are recorded and sent to headquarters. So we understand as to when new taxes or new structures or new rules are enforced, what is the way, how do you interpret them? And number two, any issues with any taxman down there, if it is a repetitive thing, then we automatically look into it. And then extensive training we provided. Extensive training to about 5,000 of our officials once a year at least. At least once a year, maybe more. And then part of them we sent to other states, part of them we sent to NASIN, National Academy of Customs, uh, which is being established now with uh, uh, the Honorable Union Minister's uh, effort in uh, Andhra Pradesh in Palasamudram. So we send them there too. Even though it's not ready yet, we're still sending our people to get them trained. And then we have also introduced 13 process monitoring reports. 13 process monitoring reports that capture the critical processes based on various parameters and then they are made available on a dashboard. So once everything is available and uh, visible on the dashboard, uh, it becomes very easy to look into certain aspects of audit and adjudication. Is there any delay? If there's an abnormal delay in audit or adjudication, immediately we look into why there is a delay. So we have fixed time frames. So there's no way that something can be delayed beyond a certain point. This is available on the dashboard. And then we have established a data analytics unit. And data analytics unit, normally all of us in the government, especially not with any offense to any particular company, but then we tend to depend a lot on the consultancy services provided from outside by which we are gradually in the government losing capacities. Now we tend to depend on the big four for everything, including drafting of letters. Drafting of letters also are done there. We barely look into it and then, uh, so we thought we should do away with this. Government should have the inherent strength to handle governance and administration. Only in areas where we need a check and balance, we have to employ these people just to check whether our people are doing right or not. Whether we're evolving and modernizing to the extent required. Whereas it has come the other way around where normal files even at the ASO level are being written and drafted by consultants. So we thought we should do away with that and we were very surprised. We got this entire data analytics unit designed by people working in Andhra Pradesh State Taxes Department who actually have an engineering background. They've done a wonderful job. And then here through this data analytics unit, we analyze data through statistics and then we have identified certain patterns of tax evasion where, which are the ones that are more likely to happen, which are the ones where larger amounts are happening. So based on this, the output of the data comes, that data analytics output, then we use it during the actual uh, implementation of the tax. Now, scrutiny, audits, inspections, all are centralized. There's no way where previously the jurisdictional officers at the division level used to take decisions, no. It has to come from top. And even if somebody down there wants to do an audit or an inspection or a scrutiny or a vehicular check, they have to inform headquarters and take it from there. And the basis on which we tally this is only through the data analytics unit output. So this is what we have done. Then faceless registrations. Now more or less Andhra Pradesh we have faceless registration. And then scrutiny automation tool. We have actually developed a scrutiny automation tool where 18 parameters are reconciled. And over a period of time, we intend to make the scrutiny automation tool available to the taxpayer so that the taxpayer and the consultant, they themselves can check whether they're in line with the requirement or not so that we don't need to go and do scrutiny. So these are some of the things. And then we also have a legal cell. Normally, most of our tax issues get stuck. And as we know how the system works, then we go and we have to stand in line near the GP and then the GP says come tomorrow and then come day after. So the matters stay there and after a while they become so old and we have so much of legacy that becomes difficult to actually go through them. So we have now a special team of uh, legal help within the department who assist both the GPs and also the councils. So we have that established that. And then over a period of time, the GST administration that has been struggling to like, you know, control this fake registrations uh, created by uh, fictitious companies and then the ITC claims and the shell companies and the fake e-bills generation, most of it actually a result of informal and then cash transaction in our country. 
somehow I think this data analytics will be a lot of help in handling this particular issues that are there. And basically what we feel is, what I feel is, over a period of time to build opinion so that such practices have to be stigmatized. Because it's very difficult for us to keep on doing this regulation beyond a point where the taxpayer himself has to actually understand the importance of uh, uh, confirming with uh, uh, the requirement because the tax base of India, if we notice, I think now presently the country's tax base when compared to a GSD as a percentage is around 10 or 12. And if we include the state's taxes also, the other taxes of the states, VAT, etc., together we still uh, are around that 16 to 18 percent of GDP, which actually in a developed country has to be in the range of 30 to 40. So we should plan to reach at least the 20, 30 percent of GDP in the near future, because the services sector, one other area where the state taxes actually do not have that much of exposure to the law and the rules concerning the services sector, where I think government of India taxation and then state taxation, they have to interact better to be able to address this issue. And uh, all said, uh, still, during the evolution of the GST, with various uh, uh, new practices, new ways that have uh, been uh, evolving, after we shifted from the VAT, from the new consumption system to the destination-based tax to uh, the use of uh, electronic uh, uh, methods, all this put together still, we have to actually, I think, appreciate both uh, the country's uh, tax units as well as the state's tax units together. They have uh, uh, help, been helping and also to a large extent stabilized the country's, uh, the new GST structure. In the times ahead, I definitely feel that with uh, electronic invoicing and then tax return filing being done electronically and more transparency and lesser interface between the taxman and the taxpayer, I'm sure we are uh, definitely going to achieve what uh, we hope to achieve uh, in the future. At the same time, I also appreciate the effort of uh, TIOL and Mr. Shailendra Kumar and the team uh, assisted by all the participants in uh, having this event where people who actually, because at the end of the day, somebody does well, you want to be, it's human to want to be appreciated. And number two, more importantly, to actually encourage other people, whether it's the taxman or the taxpayer, to perform better in his own work. So once again, thank you all and wish you all a very good year ahead. Thank you.